Hi, this is Steph Mischuk with uh, KillerSites.com. In this little vlog, I'm going to answer a question that was put to me recently, and it's, um, let me just read it off the uh, comment here. Stefan, might be a little off topic, but for an absolute beginner, how do you feel about project-oriented learning? By that, I mean only learning from projects you want to do, as opposed to learning how to code traditionally from the beginning of textbooks to screen. So basically saying, you know, do I have to go with the textbook approach where they cover uh, every single uh, detail about a language. So let's say we're talking about web development, web app development. So you're looking at the three key languages are, of course, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you want to get into uh, programming apps that interact with a web server, then I, of course, recommend PHP. Although there's many other languages out there, environments, there's Java, Java and JavaScript are not the same. Keep that in mind. Uh, there's Ruby, there's Python, there's .NET, there's others, you know. So, uh, yeah, so what's the best approach? I'm a big believer in project-based training, but you can't jump into projects straight away. You still need some sort of basic understanding of the underlying languages. That's the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript. And, uh, and you need that basic understanding of the underlying technology understanding how the web works itself, the request response cycle, client versus server computers, these sorts of things. Any decent course on web development basics is going to cover these things. Now, again, I don't believe in going over every, in the case of HTML, for example, I don't believe in going over every single tag in the HTML universe. It's, it's, it's pointless. The way to approach teaching and learning this stuff is to figure out what are the important aspects of a language or a technology, to focus on those important concepts and those important parts of the technology, and then quickly as possible get into projects. The best way to approach that, of course, is to start with mini projects. So that's how I do it personally. I've been teaching this stuff since 2002, 2003. I, I don't remember the exact date somewhere in between there somewhere but anyway so um what i would do for instance if i was teaching html i teach you the basics of what a web page is what tags are teach you some basic tags but i would concentrate on the key topics breaking them down making making them approachable and simple and then i would teach some of the basic tags not all the tags not all the rules just the important ones so you can move forward and then once you have that base then you can get into projects. But even as I am teaching that base to you, I'm actually doing mini projects, if you will. So for instance, I might teach you about um, nested tags in HTML, something very simple, and but I will show you how to do that, of course, with a list tag. And I'll show you how to use lists and how to build a little list inside of your pages. So it's kind of a mini uh, project in there, if you will, but you're actually learning uh, practical skills but you're also learning something conceptually. But once you have that basis, that basics down, and you understand what tags are and pages are and so on, and how to create websites, then we get into a bigger, broader project, of course. So let's fast forward. Let's say I was teaching you a language, a programming language like JavaScript. Uh, there's something in JavaScript called a function. Now, what I would do uh, I wouldn't teach you every single thing about functions because there's a lot to learn, but you don't need to know all these things. So that's where it import that's a, one important thing about having a good teacher, somebody who, who not only knows how to break something down into their simple components, but also somebody who understands the language and has experience using the language in the real world so that they can identify the important aspects of the language or the technology and just teach you that. So in the case of functions, you know, I would break it down. I would say a function is like a mini app inside of the JavaScript app. Because remember, JavaScript is a written coding language, programming language, but it's also an app. There is a JavaScript app installed in every single web browser in the world. And the point of this app is that it processes all that JavaScript code. Because if you remember, code, all computer code, doesn't matter what language it is, HTML, CSS, and then you got programming languages like JavaScript, Java, etc. The point of code is just to tell the computer what to do. It's a set of instructions. So when you're writing JavaScript code, for example, you're writing instructions 
that the JavaScript app will process for you. So going back to functions, functions are just mini apps built into JavaScript. And you can also create your own functions as well. And functions, of course, is short for functionality. They provide functionality. They are mini apps inside of JavaScript. And there's all kinds of rules that go along with that. So I would teach this. You know, I'll just give you a little snapshot of how I would teach functions. And then I would teach you some basic functions that are built into the JavaScript um, application, the JavaScript app. And then I would teach you how to build your own functions. And then we would do something practical. We might do something like, I don't know, validate a form to check to see if somebody put in their name or their email address properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once you have that basic, so once you have that basis rather, and you understand the basics of the language, then we would get into some real stuff right away. I'm a big advocate of project-based learning, partly because I've been teaching this stuff since 202, 203. So I, you know, you learn over the years how to teach properly. And secondly, it's from my martial arts background. I did a lot of martial arts, 25, 30 years, a lot of ring fighting as well. And one thing I learned is once the student has a basic knowledge of how to punch properly, kick properly, etc., you want to get them in the ring right away sparring because that's, you know, one month of sparring is worth probably 10 months of, uh, of hitting pads and doing drills. So yeah, project-based learning, yes, but you still need some key fundamental understanding. And again, that's where a good teacher comes in. They break down those key elements of a language or technology, and they, they're they knowledgeable enough and have practical real knowledge in the technology so that they can identify what parts of the language they should teach, the important parts.